What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Metal Maniacs Podcast. Here we got another episode of the Metal Maniacs Podcast, and today we are going to be talking about topic episode today. We got three bands that we think people should know more about. But before we get into that, um, I'm Jason Ingersoll, and I'm here with my co-host. It's your boy, Mod. Mod, he's here. How you doing today, Mod? I'm here for the Church of Metal, man. I'm ready to worship. Oh, yeah, man. Sunday and... And that's what we're here to do. So, and today we actually have a surprise treat for you today. We got a special Mm. guest host who's not only a longtime friend, but also he's one hell of a guitar player and his knowledge in metal music runs deep. We don't do a lot of guest hosts because, uh, you know, this is our first one, but we thought this would be cool to have him on here and let him get a topic so he could speak on, Um, you know. John, to me, he's a pretty inspiring guy. You know, he has discipline in his everyday life, which I always take away from um, with his training and his jujitsu, and it's always inspiring. If you follow his Instagram, you feel like a mere mortal because he is a hunk of a man, you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm talking about none other than the incredible John Roan. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Thank you, guys. I was uh, pretty damn excited that you let me come on so early. Hell yeah, man. Appreciate happy, it. Happy to have you. John, I got to ask you. Yes. Did, did you get up before the enemy today? Every day. <laughs> Every day. Yeah, I worked out before I came. Of course I did. Love you. And then, and then when I, after this, I got wood to stack. And good. I'll put it on Instagram to look uh, cool. Oh, you know, I, will. Though, I love it, dude. I've <laughs> stacked that wood. I, I never want to chop wood in my life after watching your Instagram. No, no. Well, we um, never had a guest host on here before. Sure. And usually our, ho- our uh, you know, the... The interviews that we do are people that are like in bands and they're doing stuff. Um, but we actually mentioned John on a podcast episode before because of some of the bands you had turned us on to. So Excellent. you're already known in the Metal Maniacs podcast lore. So if you want to <laughs> go back and I can't reference the exact episode, but some bands that you've always told uh, Nick and myself about. So, you know, you're always in our metal ethos and a brother in oh, metal. Yeah. So we appreciate oh, yeah. you being on. What we're going to do today is um, we're going to dive deep into three bands that we think deserve way more recognition. So we're going to shine a spotlight on some hidden gems that are like a buried treasure in the metal realm. Each one of us pick three, because usually if it's just Nick and I, we kind of go with the five each type of thing for ten. But since there's three of us, we just pick three. And we got a few honorable mentions. And if you guys haven't heard these bands, that's why we're here to tell you guys about them. So maybe you can add them to your playlist or check them out. And then, as always, let us know what you think about them. So before we even get into this topic episode, I would actually just like to... For those of you who don't know, John, so where did your metal journey begin? Like, how did it begin for you, you know? I couldn't tell you the age, but I was maybe eight, nine, and my brother handed me, he didn't have the actual uh, uh, case or the booklet or anything, but he handed me uh, Seasons in the Abyss. Okay. Right? I started when I was younger, it was Kiss. Tape? Kiss. No, it was a CD. Oh, sorry. But I, I, lo- oh. I loved Kiss, and my brother maybe thought that was a little too soft. So he handed oh, me he handed me seasons in the abyss, <laughs> and I, again it was it was that American recordings with that black and gray like they all had that same that Rick Rubin yeah yeah that, so it that was that America it was seasons in the abyss <laughs> and uh uh and then he I kind of stole a copy of Countdown to Extinction you also nice. stole music I can relate yeah yeah, yeah I never used you. Napster though I didn't have the internet mm-hmm. I lived out in the sticks so I I call it temporary borrowing sometimes yeah. I'm I I can give it back perhaps sure. We bought enough T-shirts from those bands we stole from them. Sure I would to think get back, so. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It was, it was it was Slayer. So Slayer has a. I know they're a pretty common band, but they're they have like a real special spot for me. You yeah, know, nice. and, yeah, well. and actually, one of the shows that we had played together, you actually had come up to me. I think you did too, and you both told me you're like, "Yeah, you kind of remind me of Slayer," and I was like, "Oh." Great. <laughs> my heart do i sound like jeff hanneman <laughs> just a little tighter maybe <laughs> yeah just probably a lot tighter i'm sure but yeah all hell slayer and then when did you start playing guitar was that like something that came about after you were like listening to metal yeah. and shit like that basically? it was uh i was probably 11 or 12 the first time i actually held an electric guitar was in a people that aren't from around here won't know but it was the nunica bar the old nunica bar okay, okay. A, a friend of mine through the he was older and he had a guitar and he was all drunk up he brought it in the in the bar and he tried showing me how to play rocky like a hurricane but my fingers couldn't form power chords they kept you know they come together i couldn't so that was that was the first bit and then i got a uh a, a, back in the day i don't know if they sell them like this anymore it was a crate it had an amp and a guitar 
it was like 200 bucks for the amp, the oh, guitar, the okay. tuner, yeah, the like whole box. The beginner package yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's yeah. what I started, and then it, it just it quickly got into heavier stuff. I just was like, I want to play like Slayer. Nice. That was really what it was. They were the gateway for me. Yeah, that's a good gateway. I don't yeah. want to gloss over the fact that John was 12 and hanging out at the bar. No big deal, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was younger than that, too. Yeah. He was like, just reverse my age, and I really need to be here. 21. <laughs> <Yeah>. you <know? laughs> Somebody had to drive their parents home. I mean, Christ. <laughs> The John in one. the corner just trying to power cord while his parents are all drinking. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we got home safe. Yeah, we got home safe. At matters. 12. That's great. Awesome. All right, man. Well, like I said, glad to have you on the show. Thanks for coming Thank you. Appreciate you. And mm-hmm. then we'll get into this uh, conversation here. So I'm going to start with my first band. I will go first, and then we'll just, uh, you know, let it go, Mary, go round around the table. So my first wow. band that I think more people should know about and it's kind of funny that I say this because these guys are actually becoming bigger and bigger all the time. So it's not really a super hidden gem at this point. But uh, for me, my first band is Shadow of Intent. So this band came across my radar in 2019. And their third studio record, Melancholy, came across my radar. I've seen someone talk about how it was the album of the year online. And I was like, album of the year? That's a bold statement. I got to check this out. And this was at the time where I was really into the heavy of the rap production and stuff, mm-hmm. and I wasn't really listening to a lot of metal like I had been over the last 8 to 12 months. But um, I remember when I heard the shit, I was just like, okay, I could see why this could be album of the year for, you know, I, it just struck me in a way that metal hasn't struck me in a while. So Shadow of Intent, is, they come from Connecticut, and the name stems actually from a ship in the Halo video game series. So apparently in the video game, there's a ship called Shadow of Intent. And uh, another cool thing about these guys is everything they re- released has been independent. Nice. So, like, it, all put out by themselves, no nice. backing nice. of a label or, or anything. And these guys seem to be getting bigger and bigger. Uh, Nick and I actually got a chance to see them, and they were fucking, they were tight, tight. man. They were badass. So tight. And And they were just, to me, they were heading this new, newer wave of, like, death metal like yeah. let's bring like, this death metal back like nothing against the death core but that's yeah, had its yeah. reign for long enough so let's bring this you know death metal back and go back to the days where the songwriting meant something the brutality's coming back not every other riffs a fucking breakdown like no yep. offense if that's what you like because i like a lot of shit like that too but there's just like a, a melody but it was brutal at the same time and you know, they have almost some hooks in there, so you can kind of, you know, have something to come back to. And then they have these symphonic layers, mm-hmm. which a lot of bands are actually kind of doing that now, so I'm not saying they're the first band to do it or they're the only band to do that because you got bands like Lorna Shore. And I think that's one of the reasons why, like, all of a sudden, Lorna Shore has exploded. And for good reason. Mm-hmm. They're a fucking sweet band. And yeah. Like, yeah, well, yeah. They're, they're really bad. Yeah, they're really badass. But I think Shadow of Intent, for lack of a better term, kind of, gets put in their shadow because they're kind of along the same yeah. realm. But um their vocalist Ben, he's he's one of the best in the genre. If you listen oh, yeah. to his vocals, like Ooh. you know, there's a few guys like Will's a badass and like Travis Ryan, but I put Ben right up there, one of the top death metal vocalists, and <clears throat> that's actually fucking doing something. So but yeah, you know, all their albums crush, but their new one, uh Elegy is really fucking badass. And if you're looking for a few songs to add to your playlist, uh, Melancholy, Barren and Breathless, Microcosm, and From Ruin We Rise are all ones you could add to your playlist to check out. So that's my first band, Shadow of Intent. Um, I just think a lot more people should know about them because I just love the way they're charging forward in this new realm of metal and death metal that we're getting into. Uh, I absolutely love that band. When we did get a chance to see them, I saw the drummer pop around from you know behind the stage and super nice guy. He was just amicable. He'd come up, do the selfie with you, smile, and even when he wasn't kicking it, you know, with me for the you know two or three minutes of his time that he gave me, he was you know he'd look back from where he was and he'd give me the nod and the smile and the horn. So <laughs> oh, cool, nice. cool guy and man, absolute you know monsters on their guitars. So. Yeah. Love those guys. Um, is it to me now since I'm already talking? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, real quick, that's going to be one of my main goals of the show is to get a member or two members to interview of that band on the show. That's oh, yeah. like my fucking goal when I opened yeah. the show was to get yeah. to talk to those guys right. on this fucking show. So 
I'm just putting that out there into the universe because it's going to come around one day or sooner than later. And their come up is due to they they sound a li- you know with the Lorna Shore thing with the symphonic orchestrated thing. Like I think with people jumping on Lorna Shore, you hear that enough. They'll bring gonna, them in. You're going to yeah. go over and say, oh, "I need more of that." And then Shadow of Intent is not Lorna Shore. They I think they sound enough uh, of oh, their own. Yeah, you know, for definitely sure. Different. Yeah, yeah. And I would say you know. Definitely check them out, though. They they do sit well next to that band on your rack, so mm-hmm. so definitely. Before you start, though, what are you familiar with Shadow of Intent, or yeah. is that something I, that... Familiar with... Yeah, that's a fair word. Not okay. not in detail. Not okay. uh, I, I have heard them. And it, 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 say it grabbed me, but I it, I just didn't give it a honest yeah. second listen. Yeah, yeah. You know it, what I mean? It was like I heard it and went, fuck yeah, and then... Yeah. Just went back to you know yeah. other stuff. But well, at least you'll maybe after this episode there'll be some bands that you'll go back and yeah. listen to, and then for sure we'll be in the DMs being like, oh yeah, that is fucking awesome, yeah. man. <laughs> or man, you're a fucking idiot. I can't believe you talked I, about that publicly. I, I, I trust my, <laughs> I trust your judgment. You've always led me right. So, <laughs> all right, go ahead, Nick, and you, buddy. All right, so one of the bands that I think is just criminally underrated in the metal community right now is a band that goes by the name of Veil vale of Noth. And they're out of Denver, Colorado, and I'm reading here off the metalarchives.com where it says, Vale of Noth is a vast pit in H.P. Lovercraft's underworld. So right there, if you guys are familiar with H.P. Lovercraft's work, anything at all with that in it, I'm going to it. If it's a sure. video game, a book, a movie, if you say the You're word, it, yeah, I'm in yep. all the way, even if it's terrible, mm-hmm. I'll just laugh <laughs> and I'll yeah, enjoy yeah. it for being terrible. This is not the case. I, man, this thing is only about 26 minutes long and it's smoking hot. And it's got like two little, like, you know, those little sick intro musical. Yeah. And they're not even very musical. Yeah, go ahead. Tear like it little, open. Snip- I love it. little snippets or yeah, interludes. And, or... and they're just, they're almost ambient sounds. And normally yeah. I hate those. I one star those shits and I fucking forget them. Yeah. But these really set you up for a mood. I don't know what the difference is. Almost if you go back to like Morbid Angel's Domination where you had melting. <laughs> And okay, a couple, yeah. like like they were really heavy on the mental. You could feel it in your temples when you're listening to those little tracks. And then when the music comes on, it's it's got this black death metal ambient vibe, and the vocals on it are perfect for me. And it doesn't last long. Every song on it is an absolute five star. So Veil of Noth from Colorado. The last album, the one that I have here, is Accursed, and that came out in 2019. And I'm dying for the next thing. They're yeah. they're slightly active on the social media, so I feel like they're working on things. And I believe one of the members is in several bands. I I don't have the names of the the members up right in front of me, but so they're they're probably busy too with other work. But man, if they that you know that's a band I would gladly have on here to talk to, see what's up, where you at, what's new, and when you come to play in my area. So Veil vale of Noth, if you guys want some black and death metal, it's crispy. Oh, it's so good, um, and it doesn't take up a lot of your time. So I would say it, there's no there's no real variety here in terms of other genres creeping in, other things. You know, not a lot of uh, orchestration outside of what they're doing on their instruments, which is plenty enough. I promise you. Like, it, it doesn't even need to breathe. A lot of t- we talk about that where I need an album to breathe. When you're only 26 minutes long, I. Yeah, I'm yeah. holding my breath the yep. whole time and riding it out like, let's fucking go, fam. Yeah. Yeah. And that this is that album. That's the one I wanted to talk about first. Um, yeah, so, John, ever heard of him other than just I now? Nope. Right, so, you, you just introduced me to him. Yeah, now you got so, some homework. I'm going to be, do I'm gonna be talking. To you. Actually, you have two assignments I now. Do. Yes. Yeah, two. Yeah, I uh, do. <laughs> Val of Noth is sick. I think you showed him to me because... We're, periodically, even before this podcast, we'd be like, "Hey, dude, you seen? Heard oh, this yeah. man? Heard this band? It was one you shared with me, and it was one that definitely stuck with me." And I'm like, "Okay, black and death metal, love it all day long, fucking just fierce from beginning to end." And I'm like, "All right, this is Nick. You know me. You know I'd like this shit. So yeah. I, I, I loved it too. So yeah, good call I, on that for sure. I don't listen to a lot of black metal, as mm-hmm. it were, um, at, uh, unto itself. If we're just calling it straight black metal, I probably don't have a lot of that in my catalog at all. To be fair." Um, but when you start blending that with death metal and other other elements, then 
then you have mm-hmm. me like so you see, you see it more now yeah oh, back yeah. in the day there yeah. was there was like a, a line in the sand of yeah. the black metal crowd versus mm-hmm. the death even before kind of before my time you guys sure. are a few years older than me so you probably remember it more yeah, just but as we were getting oh, yeah. into it yeah. I, I i remember kind of feeling that energy of like man you're you're a death metal, you're a tampa florida guy we're norwegian guys it's yeah. like dude well, you're but you're both from missouri yeah. like would you, would you it, <laughs> well, relax well that's that's I the mean, lore of black metal black metal started because they fucking hated death death metal right. guys and the fucking perception was those guys were commercial and pussy which i don't understand how cannibal corpse and right. fucking florida death metal is commercial and pussy. yeah fucking like, fucking hate fuck eternal Napalm death it's like yeah hate what eternal the fuck are you talking about hate like, eternal's playing on old klq i'm yeah, sure yeah, exactly. yeah, get the right. fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> yeah so love it. love it all right your turn um Brother. so i'm i'm gonna say I'm a little caffeinated in this band. I'm a complete fanboy for 100. <laughs> percent I hope to God that they hear. Hope to Satan. I hope they hear that. I hope they see this. I hope they hear it. I hope whatever I can do to promote this band because for a long time, death metal was boring for me, mm-hmm. right? And sure. I and I'm a, I'm kind of from that old like I worship at the, you guys know I worship Chuck Schuldner. Yes, right? that's my yeah. guy. Always yeah. had, Love always it. will be. So the standard to me it was always death, morbid angel. So there's a bit of melody in there. Mm. And a lot of death metal just started falling flat for me. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't, it wasn't like burning Rips. my soul up. Like it was, soup. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. But yeah. this band, I believe they're from Portland, but they, they're from Oregon for sure, but they're called Vitriol. Mm-hmm. And they, t- dude, there's a viciousness to them that I haven't heard in years. Like where I was like almost clenching my fists mm-hmm. listening to it. And the way I got into it, I, they came across my YouTube feed. Or algorithm, and I liked the custom shop guitars that they had. They looked cool. Right. Dude's all covered in tats, oh, and yeah. just sick ass yep. like custom shop Jacksons, BC Riches, and their uh, the first listen I had, I didn't I didn't know how to interpret it. I was like, the phone speaker doesn't do it justice. So I get the old Bluetooth speaker out and sit there, and it was it it felt violent, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I liked that like hyper aggressive. Yeah. The vocals were were like took my breath away. I'm like, holy shit! And I was obsessed with one song. Oh yeah, they had a song called uh, "Violence: A Worthy Truth," and I was like, over and over. And finally, I, I got it. And it's kind of like you said with Veil vale of Noth. They do have one full length. I don't exactly know how long it is, but it's efficient. Right, it gets the goddamn yeah. point across quick. But it was it was like uh, they've toured with Morbid Angel. Uh-huh. They've they've been around a bit. Um, I, They're I coming up a little. Yeah, bit, they, but... they recorded their fir- their full length with Keith Merrow. Yeah, uh, I don't remember. I don't know what a studio is called, but they, you guys are familiar yep, with them, yep, obviously. Yeah, for sure. who, who wouldn't be? But yeah, they are. They are. Uh, they they have a record called "To Bathe from the Throat of Cowardice," okay. and I, I, dude, that I know I'm fanboying, and I don't give a shit. I don't care. Like, <laughs> be known. That's I just want to like wreck shit when I hear them. Oh, they yeah. they really like light my soul. Like they burn me up, dude. And I'm like, finally, like to me, they save death metal. Because so, oh go ahead go oh go ahead because for the long, like you were saying about deathcore, and I've come around to a little more deathcore, but there was a period of time I I couldn't take it. Yeah, it sounded like nonsense. It yeah. was just like you get like it sound. It got to where there was like a couple bands that were like the core, like core of the deathcore. Yeah, and I I got it. I liked it, but then it was just bandwagon shit. Yeah, for so mm-hmm. long, and I Wanna was like these constant just reiterations yeah, of what and, you already heard. And, yeah. and, and, and and no hate to it because I'm older yeah. now and I'm a little more oh, yeah. less aggressive about it. Yeah, we say that on this podcast. No gatekeeping here. Yeah, like, we yeah. were all there. We like what we like and fuck yeah. everything else. Yeah, like, at some point, been there. Yeah. So it's been a competition yeah. from mm-hmm. this. What's better? <clears throat> no, fuck you. This is better. But we don't do that anymore. We've all grown, yeah. you know. And I want to. And yeah. you can appreciate a little bit more too. You know, go back to some bands that you kind of maybe fucking pushed under the rug and then yeah. you're like okay i respect that in a different way yeah now. but I, yeah i totally get what you're saying because yeah. I, I i say I, that a lot on this podcast Pro- people probably think i'm a fucking death core hater because yeah. as much <laughs> shit as i talk about it but there's a lot of death core that i well, fucking hater. love but one, one of my honorable mentions is a death core band mm. that i i got into so, but, right. but a little more modern but i was okay. i was like but yeah so but, you know genres do get watered down a little bit though right you have yeah. you have the ones that make a genre if mm-hmm. you will so death core is coming up and then you have a hundred or more copycats, and that yeah. really starts to like. Hey, have you heard this? Have you heard that? They sound like. Well, I don't need. They sound like. Yeah. No. I need. <laughs> I need. The OGs. Yeah, yeah. I need. Yeah. It sounds new. It's fresh. Yeah. It's invigorating. And, I don't. It, and for me, even if it doesn't sound, uh, I, I'm gonna use the word original because there's bands that don't sure. really sound original to yeah. me, but they're sure. fucking good. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't care. That. I don't give a shit if you're original. Are you good? Yeah, yeah. amen. Right? That. And, and you and, write good songs, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's fair too. And are yeah. they, are, I don't care if they're four minutes or forty. Yeah, right? I just don't give a shit. Right. It's like, but that that was the thing is I think a lot of bands tried to carry that flag of like we're this innovative. Like my music was never original. You could tell I listened to Death. You could tell I listened to Slayer. Right. But it was fun. Yeah. The crowds liked it. Yeah. You know, that was really right. what it, it was like. Oh, that, I like that. that yeah. That's a good feeling. I, I don't want the crowd to feel like they're at a in a math quiz. Uh, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, so I it was like, well, well, it's funny you say that about vitriol, but then you kind of like reference that, like you like death and the melodic because to me, vitriol is like zero all melody. chromatic, oh, no melod, there's no melodicism. There's not a melody to be found <laughs> for fucking 48 minutes <laughs> of that know. CD. No, and but I was turned so on mean. to him because Nick shared the video of the guy doing a playthrough okay, in his was, living yeah. room. Yeah, yeah. And he's on his couch by himself doing a playthrough and he's headbanging and his couch is about to fall over and he's just. <laughs> Fucking Kyle, Hope. yeah, yeah the, the Kyle. singer guy, yeah. and then there was another one with a bass player the, too, and the black eye. Like one yeah. of them, he's just got an outright shiner on it. And that's yeah. how you know. This I don't remember mother- that, but yeah. yeah, that's how you know this motherfucker rolls hard. Like he's he's doing a playthrough with his black eye, yeah. and he's dripping in sweat or oil or whatever. You know, he's <laughs> <dripping> in. <laughs> Canola oil, dude. And, and I, I I can't like sing their praises enough. Again, I, I am them. I'm a fanboy. Like. I, I love that. I can't. They got a new record. Apparently, I don't know if they recorded it or it's about to be done. But dude, like, I, I cannot get enough of, of that band. Their, I, their they, bassist shreds too. I've watched playthroughs with him sitting next to Kyle. And yeah, they both shred, and it's sick. And I'm, I'm like, oh my god. It reminds me of Fetus, Dying Fetus, a little bit, uh, just in terms of the the raw aggression of it. I would yeah. say Fetus is probably a little bit more melodic. Or, yeah, they're or a little more slam. They're a little more yeah. melodic because I don't I don't feel like I mean I feel like there's some groove in that too, but it's not just outright groove either. I just think there's an intensity to that that is yeah. just yeah. unparalleled with a lot of bands, and it, it's almost one of those things where it's palatable though, where it's mm-hmm. not like just fucking racket. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. You know, it's and chaotic. they are razor tight. I've seen stuff oh, live like on oh, video. Yeah. I follow them yeah. on Instagram, and their drummer actually plays in like a couple other bands i, I saw f- that yeah. i feel like he mm. drums for like enterprise earth if i'm not mistaken and like a, he, he's like a touring guy where he'll tour with whoever yeah. when probably he's not playing in vitriol or whatever yep. so and it, just to close on vitriol so we get can continue um to me they what hate eternal started and i, I don't know who, if you're not familiar with hate eternal get familiar with hate eternal keep to me to they are s- jay eternal. you need to become it. a better person and listen to hate eternal eric rutan is a I, staple but Vitriol took what Hate Eternal was doing and made it nastier, like made it slimier and fucking meaner. They, Hate Eternal's so tight. They're so razor tight, and Vitriol is too, but there's a certain energy Vitriol has where it's like, it's ugly. I, I don't know why you don't like Hate Eternal. We'll come back to that. So, <laughs> I'm just giving you shit, buddy. So to distinguish a little bit of a difference between Vitriol and Hate Eternal, I, and I can see some similarities, but Hate Eternal has like a lot of layers to it. There's yeah. a lot of yeah, ambience. Yeah. There's a, there's a yeah. lot of dissonance. A lot of vibe. There. Yeah. But then Vitriol is just chunky and razor sharp and on point, mm-hmm. and they're not really going for a depth there. They're not going for no. like a two guitar. I mean, I think they changed their format. I think they're up to two guitars they, now. They tour with two for sure. I know that. But I don't know if he's even, a permanent member or even not. Even so, like, I don't feel like they're doing like trade-off melodies and layered rhythms right. and they're just you know like i know one guy's probably doing screaming hot solos over yes. some of these rhythms you know yeah but um he's yeah. good man kyle is a, a freak think... guitarist in my opinion I, I, he he carries oh, yeah. an energy that i i just haven't seen and, and they're chaotic they're they're all over the place but to jay's point they're fun to listen to there's so it, another band another guy doing that same style of music i might not like it yeah I'm but with you. kyle is so authentic mm-hmm. like like i said again going to the video playthroughs man that's what sold me on it yeah. i don't know if it was you that showed it to me probably i was or, sending it to everybody yeah, dude. <laughs> but i watched it and i laughed and i and, and i loved it too and i was like oh my god that is fucking heavy look at this dude go in on it on mm-hmm. a playthrough like yeah. he means in his it. living room he fucking means it and i was like this dude wakes up and i don't even know if he's straight to the black pot of coffee you know or if mm-hmm. he's just to the guitar but he's ready for the day when he like boots yeah. strapped ready yep. he always sleeps with his boots on i hope so i'm gonna believe that he does <laughs> And he, and, he, and he plays custom shop Jackson's, you know, like like your boy. So yeah, like, I love you it. know, <laughs> good, good call on the vitriol. I'll just, I'll just tell you real quick. Uh, yeah. So I went to see a plethora of bands down in Chicago, 
and Hate Eternal was one of them. And I was there to see Origin because Origin closed the show. I was okay. there to see Origin. Yeah, yeah. And fucking Hate Eternal played before Origin. Careful. And it was an hour and fifteen <laughs> fucking minutes later, and I'm you like, dude, I'm guy. here to fucking see Origin. You were mad. You guys won't shut the fuck up. It, there's literally nothing to grab onto Fool's here. Guy. Like they were good. Yeah. Like as far as their drummer and all, you know what I mean, yeah, like yeah. but like I was just like, I get this it. is just fucking too much, man. You guys got to shut the fuck up and put oh, Origin on because yeah. that's what I'm here to see. And like the other bands were good or whatever, but I don't know. I just can't get into Hate Eternal. I bought two of their records and I'm like, I got to see what the hype's about. And then I seen them play and they played for way too fucking long. Give me 35 minutes and get the fuck out of here, please. If, like, well, there's no need to play for an hour and 15 minutes unless you're Metallica. I get it. I, I get it. If, at um, the, but if Eric Rutan happens to see this, come on the show. I love you, and yeah. I'm your boy. We I oh, I, I love him too. I You're love a legend. Too. We I appreciate like you, brother. Eternal. And like he's, a lot of the other shit that he's involved in. I know he's like so he's in Cannibal, Cannibal now. now. Yeah, he's yeah. A, and he's recorded like five of their albums. I got nothing but yeah. respect for him. I know. I just give like, you shit, of course. Especially as a, like a producer and everything. I just don't care for Hate Eternal. It just yep. doesn't do anything it's, for him. I, I think it's it's a particular type of sound, and you're either gonna love it or not. Yeah, they're so unique. I'm not. Saying they're not good either. Sure. I mean, yeah, they of course. fucking. Of course. I mean, their drummer. I was like, like astounded by their musicianship and yeah. you know everything that was going on. I was just, just. I don't know if it was just because I was there to see Origin and I was in Chicago and it was getting to be one in the morning and I had to drive home and I'm like, shut the fuck up that's, already. Yeah. I'm gonna say that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, part of it was that, and the other part was just like this song sounds exactly like the last eight songs that you played. Not yeah. that that can't be saved for a lot of death metal, but it was just I don't know. It didn't. It doesn't do anything for me. But. Set, set and setting. Um, yeah. To to their credit though, the last album that I see they have out looks like Upon Desolate Sands. Yes, that's an yep. absolute gem. Fuck yeah, that is a perfect album. Uh, I, I, I agree. Didn't, I didn't bring them to the table today because I feel like they are renowned enough. Yeah, and well, the Morbid and, Angel connection and, too. And, 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 yeah, 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 you know, exactly. he's, he's a he's a staple in the a underground huge name, world. So yeah. like, I wouldn't bring them into the conversation on sure. the topic. But yeah, uh, just. As a tangent, absolutely love that band and that album. Awesome. Jay, right. Jay, what you got? All right, cool. So for my next band that I think more people should know about, this band has been around for, I mean, forever. <coughs> I mean, forever. So this band is Cephalic Carnage. Mm. And I think they just flew under the radar because they're like considered like grindcore. Mm -hmm. Sure. And another thing for these guys, like I don't think consistency has been like – something that they've been able to attain all these years because they, their releases are kind of sporadic here and there. Um, they haven't been on huge tours. You know, I mean, they've they played a lot of huge shows, and I've known, like, Eliminator, seen them a few times, like Milwaukee Metal Fest. and But I, I just... These guys are from Colorado. They're stoner grinders. That's what I call them because sure. they're like they love the weed. They, mm -hmm. they they're stoners, but I mean they play grindcore. They're forthright about it. Yeah, exactly. And then, but they just have this unique blend of grind and death metal. But their albums are all over the place. You know, they got the fast and quick songs that are like two minutes long. Some of them are just like almost like the anal cunt type fucking mm -hmm. blast right in your face type shit. And Great. then they got like fucking seven minute long drawn out doom opuses. So mm -hmm. it's like they're kind of like all over the board. So like maybe that's a reason why I don't think as many people grasp onto them. Or at least in, in my world. I remember I went to the Bleeding Through show and then the singer from, um, I can't remember. Can't remember their name, but he had like a cephalic carnage shirt, and I was like, "That's the coolest shirt of the whole fucking night, right there." Because it's just cool to see people yeah. representing the cephalic carnage, you know. But uh, I mean, they do have songs that just pack a punch. They do have memorable riffs strewn mm -hmm. about in there. Some of it could be considered riff soup, which is weird for me because for me, I've always kind of, you know, detested that, like as yeah. far as like <laughs> the riff soup stuff, but. The later albums of theirs, like Anomalies, Misled by Cert Certainty, and Xeno Sapien, they all slap harder than your mama when you stole a cookie before dinner, because I'm telling <laughs> you right now, that shit is, they're great albums, man. So uh, if you want to add a few uh, tracks to your playlist, uh, Dying Will Be the Death of Me, Repangia, and Divination and Vi Vol Volition. So... Um, yeah, check out Sophia the Carnage if you're not familiar. If you just want some fucking, they have some nastiness, they have some melodic, they have some slow, they have some fast. I just think they they mix it up really well, and I, they've been doing it for a long time. And I just always sing the praise of these guys, and I just don't think they've ever got what they deserved as far as like recognition and as a band. But I got shirts, I got all the CDs. I just mm -hmm. a big fucking fan of Sophia the Carnage. Is that is that a band you listened to when you were younger, or they they were just always there, and you kind of dabbled as you. 
progressed? What happened was is um, Luke Fortin, uh, a friend of ours. I don't know if you know Luke or not, but he. If I do, I don't so know. he he started getting into metal. He played kind of played in Room Two Thirty Seven back in the day, but he started getting to do a lot of death metal and hardcore stuff. And then like he went to some big festival. I can't remember which one. Might even been Milwaukee Metal Fest, and he had was like, "Hey, dude, you should check out these Cephalic Carnage guys." And he, um, I can't remember what CD it was, and um, but he gave me one of the CDs, and ever since then, I was like, it just totally stuck out among like yeah. everything else unique. for me. It's a totally yeah. unique band, totally, you know, all over the place, but at the same time, shit you could grab onto. So it just a fucking awesome band. So I listened to him. I mean. F- for a long time and then ever since then my brother really liked him too so like we really got into him and every time something new came out we always like oh you hear the new cephalic and yeah, blah, yeah. blah blah you know so oh yeah big fan check those guys out not familiar enough as close of friends as we are i have not taken and given them the time that i probably <laughs> should for as much as you love them i should just take it as that's your recommendation now mm-hmm. go and run with yeah, it. yeah yeah me too i i know i'm aware but never really dug into them and i know? feel like uh, there's a little trepidation there because of the diversity in their music. Like, I feel like I'm just going to pop on a song and be like, nope, not for me, trash, and I'm afraid of that <laughs> happening. And I'm going to be like, Jay, I checked out your boys. I didn't like them, which I'm sure isn't going to be the case. I was saying, I don't think that would be the case. If I, give I it, don't think it would be the case for either one of you guys, yeah, to be if honest. I get, if I get it. a fair shake and yeah. there's, you know, like uh, some some melody there. and or You said Doom Opus. I said yes in I, my mind. I yeah. was like, sold. I, I got to go back and look for the longer songs and listen to these guys. Oh, yeah. yeah, I definitely start with like anomalies is great uh the three that i mentioned misled by certainty that was a newer one and then xeno sapiens the newest one so you could start at any of those three and just give the record a spin from beginning to mm-hmm. end and then just let me know what you feel about it because anomalies uh, i i listened to i i'll put it just the other day when i was lifting i listened to anomalies and i was like yeah this fucking record's awesome Anomalies will get you swole, John. I, I, yep. Then I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. Whatever. <laughs> swole is the goal. Swole is the goal. Oh, I love it. Uh, well, then this next one is also for you, John. Mm-hmm. This one will get you swole, too. Um, you don't get a lot of bands coming out of Iceland, but Cult of Lilith out of Reykjavik, Iceland, is one of the coolest bands I've heard in the last few years. Uh, we're going... Is that sitting here? It's at the bottom here. Go ahead. Um, (coughs) Visual aid. You got to have the reference. Um, Cult of Mara is the last release from these guys. Now, they just hit a bump in the road with what could have been an enormous step forward for them. But due to some visa issues, they were not able to tour the U.S. with Venom. Or is Mm. it Venom or Venom Inc.? I'm sorry. I think it's Venom Inc. now. Yeah. Yeah, there it is, Venom Inc. What a uh, terrible band they are. Uh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. So yeah, I don't know if that would have been that good. I have no for comment them, on that. But um, I feel like just the name alone and fan, uh, like people would go out and see these guys. But unfortunately, that fell through for them. But Cult of Mara, melodic technical death metal. Uh, these guys, you know, they're fun. Now they are gonna switch it up on you a little bit, but still mm-hmm. burning hot at only thirty six minutes. I think thirty eight. Nice. Um, this thing doesn't take up all day to listen to, and you can listen to it twice over, like back to back, and it, you, it feels fine. It's um, it's gonna have a little bit of like just random genres come in, mm-hmm. and it doesn't feel awkward at all. I found myself at some point in this album, like track six or seven, yeah, prof- Profeta Paloma. They go into like a Latin salsa thing out of the blue, but sure. it's not like stop on a dime and go into it. I think they just gradually faded out whatever they were doing. And then I'm like 30, 40 seconds into it. They really took their time with it. They made it mm-hmm. a whole segment, like not just five seconds of dancing and then go. <laughs> it was like, we're going to, and he's singing over it. You know, he's got this like opera type vocal, you know, in addition to all the death metal vocals. So a lot of vocal diversity on this album and just other elements, other little genres and and styles creeping in you know some some like hockey type organ you feel like for a second mm, i felt yeah. like i was at a ho- hockey game like listening to death metal <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> not not in an obnoxious way they just had that, that organ just like Defense. flying yeah <laughs> Cult of what, so what it, what is it though it is if what, you were to explain it, like what kind of metal, I guess. I'm trying to think Besides of Besides hockey metal. <laughs> hockey metal. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a band hockey helmet? <laughs> Shout out. 
Um, if I was going to compare it to another band, man, um, they they go fast like the Faceless, but they add more elements into it, and they've they've got some songwriting, but it's 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 a little bit more just progressive. Um, so there there may be not as many callbacks, but I feel like there's a few in there, like one, you know. Because they do have choruses. They do go to like a clean kind of a vocal. Okay. Like where the guy's standing at the back of the room. But um, it hard to put a finger on. I have to go with these generic descriptions for you, like melodic, technical right. death metal. There's a, there's a lot of melody going on here. Not like that rich, full twin guitar thing, mm-hmm. but like there are two guitars on here. And their bassist is shining on this thing too. Like you can hear this guy walk the dog all day on this album, and I love it. This guy flies. So, Cult of Lilith, a lot of vocal variety, a little bit of genre bending, definitely some fast paced death metal for you. Um, sorry, I couldn't like explain them better. That's I mean, okay. I, I'll add I, it to my list. I definitely don't have a lot of things to compare them to. Um, and even like Muskegon Lumberjacks <laughs> halftime. <laughs> that organ when it hits you. I was like track two, and that organ hit me, and I was like, "What in the fuck?" Crowd goes, "What the fuck? <laughs> How do we chant to that?" I like, I don't even watch hockey. What? We're chanting to a twelve-four signature. Like, I can't compare it to nothing, but you know, hockey. Hockey comes to mind. War, uh, you know, Stanley Cup. They like final. hockey over there in Iceland. I bet. I They're bet strongman they competitors over there too. Yeah. Goddamn um, Vikings! Yeah, they were going to tour with Venom Inc. I hate God and. They were going to be the opening on the bill. I don't know who else is on it. But. Oh, and if you like Venom, I'm sorry. I said I wasn't going to be a gatekeeper, but I just... I, I'm not familiar we're, enough. We're into the Slayer series, and I I got familiar with some Venom music. And <laughs> <laughs> also not for Jay. Th- think of the era, yeah. though. Oh, yeah, I That's get the it, thing. You, have to, you almost yeah. have to take Venom from... Mm-hmm. Like, you can't think of them now. You have to go back to 82 or 1 and go... What was there? They the, were basically the, like satanic fucking hair punk. metal. Yeah, you're not they were wrong. Like dressed like girls, but with yeah. upside down crosses, and I'm just yeah. like, "What the but fuck it, is this?" Well, I always found funny is old. I'm sure someone's gonna hear this and get all pissy pants, but there's like old footage and uh, uh, images of mayhem. And dude, they got some tight belly shirts on, oh, like yeah. up top. Cut. They got the crop top. Yeah, and yeah. I, whatever. I get it. It's the, it's the belly, era. Belly. I wasn't I wasn't around then, but it's it's like. Satan uh, loves when you show your belly. Yeah, I, I think I think some of the some some of the underground metal crowd takes their shit too seriously. Oh, yeah, it's like, yeah, dude, they sure. were who cares? Like yeah. the, I, mayhem we could go on a whole tangent about. I'm not trying to pick on them. They just came to mind, you know, but Okay. So yeah, I'm, you, I'm, John. I'm up next. Cool. Um, well, let's do it. So again, I fanboy out for all these. I wanted to make bands that I was like passionate about. Um and the next one is uh they're called Black Braid. And I, I, the only way I could describe it is Native Ameri- North American, Native American black metal. I don't know a ton of details about the... It's like one guy. His name is John. Okay. Um, okay, it makes sense now. Yeah, and it's J-O-N, <laughs> J-O-N, right? But uh, they, they have a, a sort of, uh, God, almost an outlaw image, sort of. They got the leather vest look, you know? Okay. And... Uh, yeah, they look cool. As fuck. Long, long songs at times, but they're, they're so, they they ne- to me what I hear is I never hear uh, uh, they never sacrifice melody. They got a lot nice. of the, the you know for the musicians out there that know what I'm saying. They have a lot of the tremolo pick riff, but super hyper melodic and uh, all you know Native American nature based. It, it's fuck not yeah. it, it's a cool it's a fresh take to me on black metal because while I like traditional black metal, I love it to no end. There's something different about them with not. Just instantly, Satan, Satan, upside oh, yeah, down, yeah, cross, yeah. Christ killing. Yep. It's like dude, they don't even. I, to my knowledge, they don't even mention it. They have two records: Black Braid One, Black Braid Two, taking mm-hmm. that Zeppelin approach. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, they're they're from, I believe, the Adirondack Mountains in uh, like New York. So it's not like they're a bunch of like uh, like a group of tr- Native Americans from out west. You know, you know what I mean. It's it's yeah. a bit of a different vibe, but yeah. it's like. They're they're doing man. I've seen a few live videos, and and instead of the goat skulls, they'll have like an elk skull, right? <laughs> and it's just a different. At no, least bo- there's a skull. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's a, that's a standard, right? Yeah. We gotta have a skull. Sure. But t- again, I, I wish I had more like deep details on them. And yeah, like they're they, new. Their their songs, you know, they and I'm I'm making half a joke here, but their songs are like the wolf that carries the 
ancient through the four. It's, it's some long stuff, and my, I'm a little, I'm a bit of a simpleton, so I can't remember it all. So the one that I know is, and I love it. And you're right. The spirit returns. Moss covered bones yes. on the altar of the moon. <laughs> yes, I'm your fan. I'm, yeah, I'm sold. I'm, I'm in, fucking yeah. listening to it. Like I heard it. The the name of the song was so long it ran off the screen. Yep. And so like I had to <laughs> I had to Google it immediately. Yeah. My kid's riding in the back. My kid seven. We're listening to yeah. Black Braid in the car. Sure. So I'm like, okay, we have to know. She had to know. I had yeah. to know. We had to know Google. So we go to it, we read it, and we <laughs> we laugh and and it's already a good song. I'm already mm-hmm. won by the musianship immediately. Sure. Like, the melody is rich and thick and I'm loving the vibe. It's really repetitious. Would you agree? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It just goes on and on yeah. and on and you're yep. like, man, they really stick into this melody. But mm-hmm. that's that's the way it is for some bands. Some bands move on to from a riff too quickly. Black Braid's gonna hang out with it all mm-hmm. day and this guy's like married to it. He loves it. You know, yeah. he wants to snuggle up to that riff mm-hmm. for four minutes straight. And good and, melodies too. Yeah, right. A yeah. good riff. Sure. I love it. Yeah. I love it so much. But yeah, to your point, I've I've listened to them. I love them. And they do have some really cool the wolf that guides the hunter's hand. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. Um so like they have some cool song titles. The river of time flows through me. Um, yeah. so I endorse you bringing this band. They're new. They're coming up. I think mm-hmm. they're going to get. They might get wildly popular overnight in a year. A couple festivals, yep. being being unique, having the look and having the sound that's fresh. It, you, you'd say black metal. That's the, really the only way to describe. But it, man, I don't even feel like they don't fit in with the no. traditional Norwegian or Swedish, yeah. even the American black metal band. They are like entirely. It says it, American black metal. Yeah, but you, like, right. You know. In the in the best way, they are entirely unique. Nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. they, they I'd love truly... to check them out. I got to yeah. add them to the list. It says yeah. here that um, their the Black Braid one actually featured in Rolling Stone's best metal albums of 2022. Mm-hmm. So, and then Metal Injections lifts his best best underground metal albums of 2022 and decibels top 40 albums of 2022. So just, they're that, getting that, some kind yeah. of acclaim, and yeah. they they're. they're they're undeniable yeah, to me. To so. me, they're they're not. It's 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 not a. You might not like them, but you're not gonna sit there and say they're not. Oh, they're good. Oh, I'm, you're I'm, gonna say they're good. You, I'm yeah. I'm fucking with them. I'm yeah. adding them to the list too. Yeah, yeah I, just I with the cult of Lilith. Yeah, yeah, yeah the hockey oh, metal. You're gonna love it. Oh, the, fuck yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> blades blades of steel. Any scores? Of, <laughs> of glory. <laughs> Plates of glory. <laughs> don't don't let track two uh, dissuade you from listening to the rest of the album. It's really a great album. Black Braid, though. Oh, yeah. okay. thank, thank you for bringing them up. Dude. All right. Well, I'm on it. I'm on it. Do it. Cool. My turn? Yes. All right. So my last band that I'm bringing to the table here that they're actually a newer band came around in 2019, a band called 200 Stab Wounds. So the band title itself is kind of like kind of threw me off a little bit. Yeah, I think two would do it. Yeah. Two, two, you, two, two good ones would in, do in it. In the right but, spot. Yeah. So yeah. I came across these guys, listened to them on the Garza podcast, which I love. And um, they're actually a part of the ever impressive maggot stomp movement. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this maggot stomp movement. <laughs> I'm sorry, so, but that's funny sounding, dude. So, um, Sangususabog, Vomit Forth, Tribal Gaze, Gates to Hell. They're just like a, a few of the bands that are on like this resurgence of old school death metal. Basically, it's like hardcore kids yeah. that are now fucking playing death metal. Like, and like there's this resurgence. Yeah, look it up. Maggot Stomp. And then they'll come up on Bandcamp and there's like all these fucking bands. And those bands I just mentioned are all fucking killer ass bands, all bringing this new old school death metal approach. Just mm-hmm. fucking riffs, grooves, nothing super technical, but just fucking slamming old school groovy death metal. So, um, it just reminds me of all the shit that I loved growing up in death metal. Like, just mm-hmm. that fucking raw death metal sound, fucking the grooves, the headbanging, you know, um, brutal lyrics. So a lot of them go back. I mean, the band's called 200 fucking stab wounds, for Christ's sake. So, I mean, you you you, you take sure. it for what it is. You know what but you're getting. But you know yeah, you're getting. <laughs> they, they are from, they're from Ohio, and um, they have an EP and a few newer singles, and they only have one full length. And, uh, I mean, they sound like a chainsaw sound down, sawing down your door at 2 a.m. where you're trying to get yeah. a fucking snooze in. They did recently sign with Metal Blade Records, and um, their singular album, Slave to the Scalpel, it's a banger from start to finish. I mean, it's just a groovy son of a bitch. So if you're into old school death metal, check these guys out and maybe a few of the other bands. Just the maggot stomp movement is fucking mm-hmm. awesome, man. I'm going to have to give it a listen. Yeah, I, I've, 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 I've heard the term, just never gave it enough. Time yeah. not, not 
not to sound uh, like I'm I'm too good for that, but I just you know it, you get, you well, get overwhelmed with a lot sounds, of music. Well, first of all, that band name sounds like a hardcore band name, so that immediately would probably not interest some people, right? Yeah. I hear 200 stab wounds as a band name, and I'm like, that's hardcore from Philadelphia. Oh yeah, yeah, like sure, you know yeah. I mean, like yeah. that's I think that's fair. Yeah, that's like that's, yeah. that's that's exactly what I thought too, and that's why I didn't really give them a chance. I could have any of those bands that I mentioned could have been the band that I said um, as the band that. Should get more recognition, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one particular just uh, stuck out to me because of the band name, right? Because I passed judgment, and I was like, 200, what the fuck is that?" You know. Yeah, sure. But knowing this movement and all of the bands that I've listened to of this movement are fucking killers, man. I mean, just one band after another. I'll be at work, I'll just be listening to these bands. I'm like, "Fuck another one," you know. The DJ Khaled fucking <laughs> mm-hmm. a death metal, just another one. This shit is fucking slapping, man. Yeah, I've seen the band name come up on like uh, Liquid XM. Yeah, I think it's been blinking at me but i don't know what it means no you're good all right so it's recorded good 200 stab wounds is a, a band name i've seen coming up in the ranks i need to do my due diligence and actually listen to them some more um i don't know that i've heard them at all to be honest i've seen the band name come up and i'm i don't know if i'm like just focused on driving and i can't like listen to music at right. the time but mm-hmm. yeah and i've heard it mentioned through a couple of mutual friends so something i'm gonna have to sit back and listen to because i think I'm into that. What is it? Maggot stomp. Yeah, I'm into it, dude. Yeah, dude. There, there's some sweet fucking bands coming up on this label. Uh, I, I thought it was uh, some type. Uh, legitimately, as how simple my brain is, I thought it was something to do with Slipknot. Because you said, because you said no, you said maggot. Oh, oh and I thought oh, yeah, yeah, was it like yeah. a and then I, like no knock. On, I love Slipknot. Right, they're yeah, great, yeah, yeah. but they. But you're I, not a maggot. No, I just yeah. I just knew that was like their thing. Yeah, right. right. They're, maggot, they're, yeah, they're yeah, called yeah, their yep. fans. Ma- yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm and again, you know. As big as they are, I'm only familiar with Slipknot as far as the couple songs each record that I like. Right, right. So sure. I wasn't Fair. like, am I missing something? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I thought I was no, totally no, missing this, something. This is all, all fucking, almost every one of these bands is just an old school death metal fucking headbanger from beginning to end. Like, they'll throw in the little grinds, a little technicality, yeah, yeah. but not, it's nothing over the top. It's just all, let's fucking mosh, spin kick, push, fucking pit. <laughs> Whatever the fuck you got to do out there, yep. that's what we're doing here today. Sweet. <laughs> fucking A, man. Uh, yeah, I'll have to give them a little bit more time. But they're also new, like Black Raiders. Yeah, they are new. 2019, they they basically just came onto the scene. So right. They're coming up. They'll get their due. Um, I've got one for you guys. I believe it's out of Canada now. Let me, yep, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. This band, perfect name for a band from Canada, too. I mean, it couldn't be more perfect. Neck of the Woods. Um, again, so this one, I guess I'm just going to read from metal archives again here they they call them progressive metal core it's more like progressive death core and there's a lot of variety in the instrumentation here too as well so this one's going to clock in a little bit longer i felt like it was 50 minutes maybe mm-hmm. more and uh, well i take that back i think it's only like seven songs so for today's been... for today's standards that's a that's a serious commitment. okay yeah, it is, yeah, it is, is seven songs so i think it's a little bit less than that just for the seven mm-hmm. songs but some of them are kind of long oh you say that's pretty long songs then huh yeah i know the first one was near eight minutes sure i mean you get if woods is in your title though that's probably a fucking we, good we to say you got eight minutes songs yeah we know the direction you're headed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you lost in the woods eight yeah. minute songs <laughs> This one's a little bit more angry than the... Uh, I mean, I don't know if it gets any more evil than Veil vale of Noth. And then Cult of Lilith was fun and raging and fast, but this one was a little bit more angry. And I, I, John, I know you like to chop some wood. Mm-hmm. I think this is a band for you. Just by virtue of the name alone. Look at those wolves. Look at those I know. pack of wolves. How did you come across it? Just a I, serious XM I believe thing? So. And you were like, this I is did. fucking cool? Or yeah, what? and they don't get like enough love f- from that station. You know, I, but I think they do find ways to squeeze bands in that I catch that I'm like, holy shit, what is that? And then I'll take it home. I'll like, I'll take a picture of it, the screen, the dash in my car, and then I'll like go back to that photograph and I'll say, what was that band name? And I'll dial it up and I'll listen to it. And so like, I'll find the song that I listened to and I was like, yep, that's it. I remember that one. This does slap. And then I just listen to the whole album, like basically through YouTube or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's not good enough for me to just listen to it on YouTube or Spotify. I turn around and I bought that bitch. And then I had it shipped to my house and I ripped it and now I throw it on my phone. And 
Okay. Yeah, it's got a lot more instrumentation on it. I know, like, at some point, an acoustic guitar creeps in, and they're strumming, and I just feel like, that that tracks, you know? I'm in the woods. I just woke up. I want my black yeah, coffee yeah. over the fire, and, <laughs> and I want a little acoustic guitar before I get rowdy and have to hunt bear. So, like... <laughs> I mean, if you look at these guys, they do look like they got done hunting bears. Yeah, the they lead just, singer... Yeah. Are they from Canada? Absolutely. They're, okay. they're probably from up north in Canada somewhere. The no, woods. Yeah, the woods. <laughs> that I, neck of the woods. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> you don't say. I, swear, I swear to God, the singer like he wrestles bears. You know, like he, he chokes them out just once. You think? Just once. He I, wrestled the bear once. Yeah, probably just once. I mean, how many times are you gonna wrestle a bear? I mean, ask Leonardo DiCaprio. Ask I didn't the, know it's ask, work out ask the band just once. <laughs> just once. No, ser- on a serious note, I, I listened to it again. I revisited it because I wanted to find out what bands go on this list today. I don't think they get enough love or attention at all, even though I did pick up on them from like Sirius XM, mm-hmm. which is uh, good for them. Uh, I think it's a good place to find metal, too. But their social media has become a little bit more active, so mm-hmm. they're, they're out there. They're doing the thing. They're doing shows, and I think... I'm not sure if they dropped a new recording. Nope. The Annex of Ire, uh, 2020, the most recent that's that one. one. Yeah, that's the one that I have here. Um, and I highly recommend it. Uh, if you're looking for something new, a little bit different and underground or unknown so far, check out Neck of the Woods. These guys are angry, mean Canadians. Like, mean Canadians. Love it. Like, mean, Love it. angry, mean Canadians. You don't find many <laughs> like, of those. Fuck Jordan Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why... <laughs> That's why they go on this list because people don't want angry Canadians. They're sleeping on it. Yeah, <laughs> so. there's some angry people up north. It's cold. You've yeah. been cold for that long. Yeah, you gotta be. You're you not gotta happy. Be a tough son of a bitch. To I I, I would like to um, just because I pulled this up. So just for our listeners, um, neck of the woods. It says complex, confrontational, and unflinching. Lee Heavy. That was a quote by Robert Collins of CTV Music Reporter. And then another quote here says, Neck of the Woods have honed a technical, multi-genre approach to metal that sounds like the product of Devin Townsend working with Converge, ripping serpentine riffs and brash breakdowns make it impossible for Neck of the Woods to lose your attention. Yeah, that all sounds really delicious okay. and true to me. Yeah, like, so that's I, just, like, I wanted to yeah. rifle that off so people have a little context of what what we're talking about yeah, here. So, so if somebody, I want to check it out now. Yeah, if you need something a little more diverse, mm-hmm. it still metal, still goes in, but again, now we talk about having some breath, having some mm. moments to like yeah. decompress the metal a little bit. This one will give you that, and not, not for too long a time mm-hmm. you know but it'll bring it back they're they'll bring it back they'll bring in that they'll start folding in the layers of the heavy over the top of the acoustic or whatever melody they break it down to and it's not like the most progressive thing i don't think there's tickling ivory going on in this right. album but there's probably like it's layers. not sleep token but no but you know i mean it wouldn't be bad if it was but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, no, I love i love myself some sleep token but yeah so anybody listening um when you get out to this episode here neck of the woods some nice. angry Canadians Fuck drinking yeah. black coffee and wrestling bears. No I, doubt. I'm definitely taking notes after this, and I'm putting these on a playlist. And Tuesday, when I'm back at work, I'm listening to all these records. Same. I got to make time for all of this at some point. So I'm already like the list that you've got before we even start. Oh, you this probably podcast, got a list of 35 fucking bands. Yeah, been my, I get overwhelmed so, quick. Yeah, I got to yeah. pick two. Three, yeah, yeah. And it's like I'll, it'll be a slow trickle. Yeah. Yeah. Two or three of them will stick out. Yeah, but I can't. I can't, dude. If I write ten of them down, I get uh, ugh, it's too much. Sometimes it is too much because you yeah. can listen to ten new bands and then not know what, what, what you heard. You're yeah, to. you just yeah. got to take in one at a time. Just yeah. listen to it, and then the next day maybe do a different yeah. one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can't do them all in one day because. I use the uh, usually at work. What I'll do is I'll pick one band. and I'll just listen to their whole catalog or yeah. something. You know what you I mean? Go. So yeah, I can dive sure. into all of it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But, so we good on neck of the woods. Is that yeah. what you have to say? Yeah, don't get right, lost cool. out there in it. Yeah. All right, John. Um, we're going to do an honorable mention thing as yeah, well. Yeah, we'll do that All at right. the very end. I, I, was, say... I was torn between f- for my third one because they're both kind of known. But to me, like, I don't know. I, I don't think they get the credit they deserve. But my third one on the list is actually Watain. Okay. And I'm sure there's a lot of people, if they're listening, they're at least familiar with Watain. They've been around since, like, 99. Okay. And the, the singer, Eric, he played in Dissection. For a while, love me some dissection. I, I love dissection too. To me, dissection. And I know they're Swedish, so that'll piss some people off. They are the pinnacle of black metal to me. Ooh. They had, to me, they are. Ooh, and I know they have a rough history with the. I there was rough shit that went on in oh, that yeah, scene, yeah, yeah. right? I'm, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not even gonna comment on all that. Yeah. I'm talking about the music, the records. Yeah. Uh, and Watain is kind of they're not they're not to say they're an offshoot of dissection wouldn't be accurate. 
but they come from that same vein. I think if you like yeah. dissection, you'll like Watain. And they have a straight up, you know, outlaw image. They, to me, they're the real deal. I've, I've seen black metal bands live. And I, I, look, I've seen Demu. They're great. They're cool. I love them. It's, it's Kiss, but it's black metal. Yeah. And I mean that in the best, most complimentary right. way. Yeah. When Watain, when Watain comes on the stage, I think that's how they walked around all day. Yeah. I believe it. Like that blood is real. Like it's 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 that like stereotypical vicious black metal. But there's something more sincere about them, you know, to me. And 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 whether or not I believe it is irrelevant. But I like that they're sincere. Yeah. Right. They come out like I watch their shows, dude. And they feel they make me nervous, <laughs> honestly. Like, and I'm kind of like a tough guy. But when I I, I have this uh, uh, during COVID, you know, all the shows got shut down, mm -hmm. and Watain has a, a specific uh, photographer that they work with, and he created a, a you know, photo book for Watain. He signed it. It was like 100, 200 copies or something. And just some of the images, they're, they're so gritty. They're so gruesome. Like, it, it, it almost gave you like a black metal Gigi Allen kind of feel. Visceral. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, like that's the real deal. And there's something about that for me uh, that I, I love that. Yeah, they make me nervous. Like, I don't know if I, like, I love Watain. I want to see him. I've never seen him live. But I don't know if I want to hang out on the bus with him. Yeah, some bands you know? give off that energy and their fan base too. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, this, they got, this yeah. show I might be a wallflower. I'm yeah, not, I'm not that fucking hard. Yeah, they got like spurs <laughs> on their cowboy boots and the I'm leather vests. I'm noticing but... a theme between Vitriol, uh, Black Braid, and Watain. They're mm -hmm. all outlaws. They all walk that life. Yeah, they're all yeah. badasses. Like they're all they, and that tracks for John. It, you know, knowing John <laughs> Ro <laughs> general like that that make that list makes perfect sense coming from you. Yeah, there, Th there's a there's a genuineness to them, yeah. genuineness. And Watain has the biggest catalog out of all these. And sure. again, I think a lot of people listening are going to be like, "Oh, Watain, why do they need an honorable mention?" But I just don't. I think it's still to this day, and I mean, check me if I'm wrong on this. I still think when people say black metal, what comes up? Emperor, a emperor, uh, mayhem, mayhem. Yeah, the the standards, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. there's to. For good reason, yeah. But I think sometimes, like, there's these bands that are just under that are like, man. I, Would you say that they're doing well, something new to black metal and for black metal, or are they just doing black metal like standard operating procedure, just it's, best? So it's game better. In town, and better. You, better. But, and, that, and you guys will know, like, the Norwegian stuff is a bit more uh, symphonic in, yeah, a, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. The Swedish stuff has a bit more melody. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're at, at times, Watain kind of has a like a rock and roll vibe. Yeah, like I've noticed that with some of the stuff not, I've listened but to. But it's it's, it's pure metal, but you could kind of feel like this rock and re roll rebellion mm -hmm. sort of energy to it. But there's more to me. There's more melody for me. You know, bands like Dissection, Mardu, Watain. Uh, if I, I found myself, oh, all my favorite black metal bands are from Sweden. Okay. There's something about the melody out of Sweden that's just not I'm yeah. say better or worse, it's just different. It's kinda and, like a Nashville of Europe, you know. Sure. A lot of people go to, to sweet to areas of Sweden to, to to record and formulate bands. So I uh me personally I like the black metal that is a little more produced, a little more melodic. That's yeah. kind of like Watain's well like, produced, so very well. Like it, you could you could say, well, that's not black metal because it's not fucking mayhem or early emperor. You know yeah, what I mean? Because sure. it's just raw, that really shitty sound and stuff. But like, Fisher yeah, Price. that's black metal, like yeah. the old like Dark, dark Throne. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. But I like Dark Funeral because they're more fucking Amen. Swedish. Yeah, Swedish. They're yeah. more fucking. They have melody. They have shit you can catch on to and they're a little bit more better produced to me you know yeah. what i mean like they're not like we don't we don't, don't have to sound like shit to be black yeah. metal it's like no we'll play black metal but have it sound good that's my kind of black metal that, right and that, there, it's know? funny because that was one of the knocks on uh, uh, uh there's a couple records from watain they had one called the wild hunt i don't know if it's my favorite but it's up there and that i'd say is that there that's probably their most commercial I guess if you could use that term, but I remember people getting all up in arms. It's too produced. It's too. It's uh, like, dude, and that's the thing. Like it's as deep as we are in the metal. That is one of the most like off putting things is when people. Oh, it's too produced. I'm like, would you shut up? Yeah. Just stop. It's, you're you're like forty years old. Music. Right. Yeah. You're complaining about, about something. People yeah. you you're, don't know making yeah. music you can't write yeah. in a place <laughs> you've never been. <laughs> Like, shut up. I thought quote of the fucking century right there on the Metal Maniacs <laughs> podcast. That's going to be a clip. What do, what do people have against clarity and music? I don't need to hear It's not like, true and cult. It, it sounds... But there's there's something unique to Dark Throne having that. And look, and hopefully this shit blows up and everybody hears this, right? There is something special about Dark Throne. It sounds like dog shit. Yeah. And I love it yeah. because I want it to sound like I want yeah. them to be that. They are right. the best at that. And yeah. I love it. But some uh, of it, uh, Marduk had a record, um, uh, World Funeral, yep. came out in like oh 
two. Yep, familiar. That instantly, the first thing I remember reading in Metal Maniacs and reading in the magazines, all the hardcore, you know, black metal guys, it's too produced. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Which, like, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I, don't I never got it's it. Like, we, you actually. It's all we ever wanted. Was it's like, yeah, you <laughs> actually enjoy. Yeah, the, no shit. You actually enjoy the music and want to hear it well produced. Like, that's, yes. If you're a real fan of music, you want to hear what's going yeah, on stu- to me. But, stuff's not clipping. Yeah. You can hear the bass. Yeah, you can exactly. hear distinction between the toms. Yeah, there's a feeling <laughs> when you listen to it, not just a lo fi fucking yeah. radio sound in the background. But yep. with uh, Watain here, it says um, the band have become famous for their the- theistic. Satanist views and for their live shows, sure. which involve pyrotechnics, candles, satanic rituals, animal carcasses, and blood. Yes. So just throwing that out there. Keeping it real. Yeah. Keeping it real satanic. Kind of, kind of, they have a, a, a bit of that Gorgoroth thing going on where you go to the show and you're kind of nervous. You know, I don't know if you want to yeah. be up front. Like maybe <laughs> if you're like under 25, you probably want to be up front. But after like 28, 30, you're kind of like, I'll hang up back here. I don't want to get, you know, pig blood on me. When I seen Mayhem, they fucking, their singer had a fucking, like a cow carcass or something on yeah. his mic stand. I was like, okay, we do. It does this, look huh? cool, though. Yeah. I like it. Some of the bands will put like barbed yeah. wire on the front, whether yeah, it's yeah. real or, I don't think it's real a lot of times, but it's all it, about it the show, cool. though. You yeah. Know? So, but cool. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to it. I've, I'm definitely familiar with them and, and heard them before, but I'm going to dive into them a little bit more, too. So, awesome. anything else about Watain? No, that All was right. pretty much it. I was... All right, well, before we wrap up this episode, I wrote a, a few honorable mentions down. Um, obviously, I'm not going to really go into detail with these bands. I'm just going to name them and maybe say a sentence or two about them. And then uh, you got a few honorable mentions, oh, too, yeah. just yeah. just yeah. so you guys yeah. got yeah. a little bit more context to, gr- or context to grasp onto, uh, maybe a few more bands if you guys want to check them out. So, um, for me... Honorable mentions, Vomit Fourth. I've been fucking with this band so hard lately. They're another maggot stomp band, but like for me, <laughs> these trend guys here. are fucking just Oh man, they're fucking so sweet. They're so heavy. They're so fucking in your face. Just fuck off death metal and I love it. Um another honorable mention, Inferi. That's one that we had mentioned before, and that's fucking one that a, John showed both of us and we've come to love those guys i I went through their whole catalog after you had brought them up another Uh, hp lovecraft yeah when you when you brought them up i can't remember on which episode for what but you had brought them up and we talked a little bit about them um that's where we mentioned john maybe that was our slept on bands episode but uh yeah in fury fucking badass i mean melodic push it to the point um pale face swiss is a band they're like a deathcore band that i just checked out the other day and i heard like a interview from them now it's basically like Corey taylor and a death metal death core band like because that's what the vocals sound like yeah. like the real pissed off Corey yeah, taylor yeah. vocals like total slipknot but man this the band is punishing and i'm not i'm always kind of in in the middle when it comes to death core but these guys really made an impact on me just within the last couple of weeks so i added them to the honorable mentions and my very last one is frozen soul so that's another. They're they're not a maggot stomp band, but they are resurgence of old school death metal. Fucking bang your fucking head, push the dresser over, fucking kick the computer <laughs> chair, whatever you got to fucking do. But let's just mosh in the room. Fucking yeah. frozen soul. What was so the fucking fucking badass? What was the one before that? Say that band. Pale name. face Swiss. Pale face Swiss. And they're called Pale face Swiss because they were originally called Pale face, mm-hmm. but they got in like some. There was already somebody out there that was an artist, like a techno artist called okay. Pale Face. So they had to change it to Pale Face Swiss the, because it was a. Uh, um, yeah, there's only so many. Vitriol yeah, has something like that yeah, too. There's yeah. some kind of, pop, I don't know, I'm gonna mistake them, but some kind of pop EDM sort of thing that's called Vitriol as yeah. well. But it, I don't Vitriol know. EDM. Yeah, they, they, yeah. There was a, there was another band that I was checking out the other day called Dead Body, and that kind of there's. I was trying to find them and it was so hard because there's like 10 different things that are called that. Oh, yeah. One's like this That's weird fucking term. like, yeah, it was like yeah. some lo-fi hip hop thing called yeah. Dead Body. And I'm like, I, this ain't, I guarantee this ain't what's on tour with this fucking band I'm trying to check out right yeah. now. So I had, to, I had to find it. It was actually one word, but I can't speak highly enough of Frozen Soul though, man. Just fucking reminds me of like Covenant or, uh, you know, Domination, just that fucking groove and everything they do is like, wrapped around like just being cold and like yeah, fucking yeah. like icy and fucking they're like from texas <laughs> mean, but yeah they'll literally theme. bring like a fucking snow machine on stage yeah. and shit it's like so fucking <laughs> badass but they're just like some regular dudes like us in jeans and fucking playing yeah, death yeah. metal but it's fuck just yeah. groovy as fuck so uh yeah 
don't, those are my honorable mentions. I, I'm just loving this fucking uh, this resurgence. It just feels like metal and music in general is just coming back around after COVID, and there's just so many cool bands yeah, emerging shit. and fucking kicking ass. And uh, you know, these bands that I mentioned today are some of them. I, you guys should definitely fucking check out. Jay, this has been one of my favorite episodes to do so far. <laughs> Just because of the maggot stuff. Yeah, he won't stop with it. I, I, I gotta keep saying it, man, because I, I fucking love it. I get it. it. I get it. I love it. And the band names too. Some of the band names for me, I just couldn't stop laughing for a minute here. Jesus Christ, dude, dude. vomit forth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're fucking punishing. Bro. I, again, punishing. I think I think you know what you're getting. You're you're yeah. you're not but, getting uh, images and words, dream theater yeah, type no, shit. They are them. fucking punishing in your face. <laughs> fucking. Okay, so. I got a few for you, Jay, if you're ready. Um, I'll speak to them in no particular order, um, but I do have them pulled up. So the first one for you guys is another band out of Colorado, uh, Blood Incantation. Something okay. Going, something Young kids. Water. Young, yeah. Younger yeah. kids. Yep. Yeah. Uh, future of Metal here. Uh, very raw sound, too. I don't... I would not be surprised to find out these guys don't record to a click track and i don't say that because they sound like they're not recording to a click track something about it just feels really raw yeah and like Good. like i think the tempo shifts maybe give me that impression mm-hmm. like okay that was a that was a serious kind of tempo shift there it was slight enough but it was i felt it and i don't mean to speak to how they record but i just want to give people listening the idea that it's like some kind of sludge slime factory coming yeah. out of blood incantation. Fuck Have yeah. you heard them, John? Yes. Yeah. Not okay, not so- in great detail, but I remember hearing them. They came across the yeah. the Spotify yeah. suggested or whatever, yep. and I was like, "Whoo!" Yeah, I okay. have the yeah. one. There's some younger kids. That's some filth right there. I like yep. it. Yeah, and to hear that there's, I mean, God, if they're young now in 2019, they put out uh, hidden history of the human race. So these guys are heavily influenced by like alien. Hmm topics yeah so i think um, there's an alien on their cover yeah and i think oh that, you got it right there yeah and that's it. a yeah. that's yeah, a famous they, painting i think that or a semi-famous painting that they like were able to use the image for for that particular album i've seen that artwork before either on a book cover or it, it was on some you know reddit thread probably i read about it they do have a new album out i need to touch base with this one and circle back to it it's been out for about a year it's called time wave zero i thought i i caught a track from it maybe the other day i'm not 100 percent certain but uh, I absolutely love these guys. Very punishing. Kind of reminds me of Morbid Angel. It was Kingdoms of Disdain. Is mm-hmm. that the most recent? Yeah, yeah. K? Yep, yep. Yep. So we're that up to type K. of energy. Yeah, it's raw. Like it has that yeah. feeling. And Morbid's to... well known for not using clicks. Yeah, Trey and, refuses. And that he won't do it. Yeah, and, and which I like. That's why I say that. I listen to Kingdoms, and then I listen to uh, Blood Incantation here, and I felt like a very similar energy. I feel like, yeah, check out Blood Incantation. Next, this is a band, I don't know, man, I've had this CD in my collection for a little while now. I caught them on the radio, on mm-hmm. Sirius XM. Bella Core, let me pull up that. I think they're from Australia. Yeah, Australian melodic death metal from Melbourne, Melbourne, Victoria. And I must have heard a track. And or what have you followed up with it and said absolutely yes, bought the CD, and then must have forgot about it somehow. Like just didn't make the time. You know when you overwhelm yourself with mm-hmm. too many bands, yeah. right? Yep. So this one, I, w- I was man, this is so like I need to like I not only slept on them a little bit myself, but I feel like everybody else is sleeping on them too. Um, I don't know how long they've been around, but just listening to the newest album, John's got it in his hand. What is it, John? What is it? Um, coherence. Coherence. Thank yeah. you very much, sir. That one is a ride. Like, you've got your 11-minute introductory song. Like, right out of the gate, you're listening to a nice 10, 11-minute song. Then you move on to a 5-minute song. And then you go back to an 8- or a 9-minute song. So a lot of progressive, melodic themes here. Definitely one that I was surprised by myself. Like, why didn't I listen to this immediately? I obviously bought it for a reason. I didn't just listen to it and say, oh, that's cool. I listened to it and said, holy shit, I must own this. And I have it. And then... For some reason or another, it got swept aside. For, so I slept on them. Everybody's sleeping on them. Check out Bellacore from Australia. Uh, very melodic, very death metal, very, very Twilight good. inspired Bellacore. Yeah. Is, that what, yeah, is that what it is? <laughs> it's it's kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just bullshit. The band's name originates from the character Bellacore, the Dark Master, in the Warhammer fantasy game setting. So, mm. gamers, now you got yourself some metal uh, for your big raging war battles. There you go. And lastly, now I cannot speak highly enough of this band. This is one of my new favorite bands, and they've been around for God twenty three years now. Ulcerate, 
uh, from New Zealand. So just off the coast from my boys in Bellacore. Mm -hmm. They're just a little boat ride away. But they've been doing it forever. They just put out uh, to stare into, or stare into death and be still. Uh, and that came Jesus. out. Jesus. Oh, God. God. Dude, <laughs> don't move. 2020. <laughs> and this album, to me, it, it reminds me of a couple of things. Moby Dick, just going after the whale, you know, Cap Cap Nahab mm-hmm. through the storm, just gotta gotta get it the whole time. And also the scene from Forrest Gump. We've got Lieutenant Dan at the top and, 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 and the <laughs> Call crow's this a storm. Yeah. It is seriously that for like sixty minutes, this album, you know, will take you there the whole time. Mm-hmm. And even when you feel like the storm is kind of relenting, you know you're only in the eye of the hurricane. It's mm-hmm. coming back around. You know it. It's off in the distance. The The ominous feeling is there. And I get, I don't know that the lyrical content is H.P. Lovecraft or Lovecraft, but I get that same, I keep mispronouncing it like, I'm, like I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, it feels like that. It feels like you're in, you feel like the squid tentacle monster, mm-hmm. the Kraken is coming <laughs> from underneath the boat. The whole thing to me feels like I am in the storm. So ulcerate, stare into death and be still. One of the most intense albums I've heard in a while, super dissonant, but melodic. And John, mm-hmm. Jay, I'm going to make fans. <laughs> I know Jay's heard it. John, I'm going to make you listen. I'm going to sit down and watch you listen to it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's good. It's just one of those things where it's just like there is some noise and some droning and some stuff going mm-hmm. on. It's not straight to the point. There's just a yeah, lot of... A lot of layer and a lot of stuff just happening at all at once. You, and almost, it's kind of you like, almost have to be in a certain mood. Yeah, you kind of. For I it think to grab so. you, maybe. Yeah, I, I would think be. so because um, I listened to it a few times. And um, if you're looking for like straightforward death metal, that's not it. It's like sure. you, you no. got to be. It reminds me of like a real death metal neurosis almost. Yes. Like just oh, like yes. like yeah. a real like there's just a lot happening. Yeah. But you know, they, a, a wall of fucking noise coming mm-hmm. at you. That's the way I felt about it. Like that a said, wave though, of noise. It's only like their instruments coming at you. There's not a huge production element going on in the background. These guys yeah. have a way of just bringing their guitars and, and the drums. Oh, my chords God. like just. Yeah. Just Heavy, big thick long chords, chords yeah. and then maybe a melody over the top and yeah. it just kind of goes on and, and, and that melody yeah. could be very very simple yeah. like just a couple of notes just here and there to, long songs yeah long, long longer songs longer, yeah. seven eight sometimes yeah, so sure. i walk the dog to this one because that's about a 45 minute jaunt for me mm-hmm. and i oh man and sometimes i'll i'll take a little extra time walking the sure dog because yeah, i yeah. gotta make it to the end of the album the last track they're so high on the last track that's the one that features the video mm-hmm. but i never recommend listening to a single song off of this album i recommend listening to the whole album take it in yeah, yeah. this is one of those that's what where, you said to me you messaged me a, a few weeks you said yeah. you told me not to be a bitch and listen to one song <laughs> on youtube you said you gotta listen to the whole thing and you were, there was another person within days they were like you ever heard of this band and i'm like i you know what it was is i had that thing when someone recommends to you and you're like oh well I don't know. Yeah. Don't you don't recommend. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like no. It's well, like, I'll discover good... it myself. Yeah, well. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right, John. Yeah. For your inferior recommendation, I offer okay. you uh, ulcerate okay. because uh, I don't know that a hundred percent it's your style. Either that, or just don't be a bitch and listen. Right, to I, you already. right. <laughs> it's, I toughen up. I toughen, toughen up. up. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, for for all of the working out and all the wood chopping, you've got time to listen to this. In the <laughs> I background. do put in the headphones. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. So not a lot of blast or grind beats coming at Mm-mm. you, but the drum work is mm-hmm. spectacular. Like the way he decorates everything, and th- the ability to like harness a nice grooving beat. Sure. Um, probably my number one um, um, honorable mention. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys both uh, put a little more time into your one band and your honorable mentions. So I'm going to quickly mention one. Okay. And then I'm going to say a sure, little more. Yeah, sure. So what the a, quick mention, you're... the quick mention for me is is uh, it's w- normally way out of my fucking wheelhouse. Okay. But it's a band I came across called Of Sulfur. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and very familiar. And they yes. have they yeah. have some of the like in its essence like traditional deathcore stuff. Mm-hmm. But in my I interpret it in my brain as how I, I wanted it to be. Right, yeah. it's like I didn't mind the elements of deathcore, but it was just something off about it for me. All like pretty much across the board, mm-hmm. right? Although I appreciated it, but this band is like they have a very death metal vibe. Yeah, and they and then they bring in uh, like Tim from As I Lay Dying. Yeah, uh, the, 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 what's uh, the guy's name that from Slaughter to Prevail? Uh, 
God damn it. The guy that wrestled Alex, Bears. Alex yeah. Terrible. Yeah, yeah Alex okay. Terrible. And he's got a hell yeah. of a voice on him, but so, like yeah. these guys are as brutal as it gets, but they, they have cool They got a cool lot of melody. theatrics to them, too. Yeah, it looks cool. Maybe not necessarily on stage, but like their videos and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like the Int- dudes yeah. in costumes and yeah. shit like that. And I almost feel like that's one of those bands where we had referenced like the yeah. symphonic elements, like back some of that track, too. Yeah. too. They, yep. they kind of got some of that in there, too. Yeah. They, but a little more... Not as death metal as like Shadow of Intent, but like sure. more death core, like you're yeah. saying. Yeah, just just enough death metal for me to still ride that yeah. boat, you know. Yeah, yep. um, but the, the other one, and uh, it's like it couldn't be more different than what we've been talking about. But I don't know if you are you guys familiar with Sabaton? Uh, no, I'm familiar with the name, but never so really. For me, it's it's it's, it's almost like uh, like is it power metal? I don't know. Yeah. Is it heavy metal? Yeah, power yeah. metal. But yeah. for me. Being a massive like military and war historian, every single track is about war, a battle, of something of the sort, <laughs> dude. And I, dude, I get it because there's a lot of guys into the harder shit that will hear them and they'll go, "That's so cheesy." And it's like that's part of the 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 appeal to me is it's so goddamn epic. And and again, so a lot of their songs they're singing about like shit that I like know about right, i know yeah. every damn sentence they're saying yeah. the battle they're talking about so that's like a hyper niche thing for me specifically okay. well there's, so I, there's I room for power metal on the show hammerfall yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's metal but maniac they're, so but they're, we talk about power metal it's cool to like but it. i think it would be like if you liked i think if you liked old like dio okay. you could probably like sabaton yeah, yeah. some sure. of the metallica fans will like it they're the, i first saw them their first show they played in north america they played with iced earth okay and a, a friend super of, power metal yeah tracks, a, a fr- so. and i love iced earth a friend of mine was christy on drums careful with no that. no they no. they had a, a God, i can't remember the guy's uh last name he was like a standing drummer but oh, okay. um a, a friend of mine is friends with john schaefer okay iced earth so yeah. we, we got to go have lunch it was all oh, cool nice. but Fuck sabaton yeah. opened and it would like their drum riser is a tank Oh, right? fuck yeah. Like, literally everything is war. And everything. This, and this is why I'm over here laughing. Dude, I, it, it's I've so over them, the top, dude. You know, with, I've seen yeah. them with the aviators. Oh, dude, the, the, the camo. camo. Yep. Yeah, and I just, and I laugh because, yeah, they got the whole gimmicky look. And yeah. It's not bad music. I'm not judging them on the music. I do have to laugh at the look, but even I that, think they do. Yeah. Like, yeah, to a degree. Yeah. It looks yeah. like it's... It's, it's on purpose. It's, like they it's wear, tongue in cheek. They it's, all wear the, the urban camo. Yeah. They all... Identical yeah. pants, identical yeah. camo guitar. Like, there's a thing to it. And yeah. it's... A, yeah, aviators of the yeah. mohawk. and, oh, yeah. the But, they're, I mean, some of their shows, like, they, they play some pretty big shows. and uh, Surprisingly big. There's John, been times... I did, I did not... <laughs> Didn't expect that come. I know, dude. Yeah, but, that, he saved that fucking little donut for right. the last. There, he but said dude, he don't eat sugar, but he'll throw a little sugar on no, the top. No, the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you're listening, it's, it's way more funny watching it because I'm trying to hold back the laughter. <laughs> I'm doing silent laughs back here. Yeah, I, I, Mod's finding our shit hilarious. Dude, I, I, today, I had, a, but... I had a, I had a, I there's, I get, yeah, I mean, again, I like, I like some power metal. I liked Hammerfall. Yeah, no, I, oh, I saw good, but yeah, Iced, Earth, Iced Earth. Uh, uh, got a little controversial for some people because of what John Schaefer's uh, legal actions were. Uh, again, it's still who, like good power metal band though. Yeah, but keeping you, it to the music, and, right? You know, Weist Earth, they, they've got some good stuff. I know haters gonna hate, and, and they're people, a foundational band yeah, for me anyway. Yeah, I've seen Weist Earth. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, they're great. I've seen so, them a few times. I mean, they, for what they do, there's yeah, nobody better. Yeah, they, they, I think. they fit where they fit, and they do it very well. And they, yeah, they they made a name for themselves, obviously. So. Amen. Cool, cool. Well, with that being said, everyone, we're going to wrap this episode up. If you guys listen to the podcast, we really appreciate it. You know, if you guys could go over to Apple Podcasts and give us a five star so we can get this out there to all of our fellow metal listeners. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the show and ha- being having a guest. Me. Thank you. Host. Maybe something we can do again in the future. You know, um, sure, this was sure. a lot of fun. Uh, great episode today. Please subscribe on YouTube. Mod found it hilarious. <laughs> So <laughs> there's nothing serious about world affairs and combat, yeah. you son of a bitch. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, War. please subscribe on YouTube, like our Facebook page, all that stuff. We're really trying to make this uh, podcast work, and we are going to have some big guests coming up here in the future. I promise you that, and we're going to keep getting better, and uh, we're going to keep it metal, my friends. So much love to you guys, and uh, peace out. Peace. Which camera am I on? This You're one? on that one. That one? Yeah. This one? I'm over here. Where's John? John? John's you? over there. <laughs> you can't miss me. You're not going to miss me. All right. Let's go.